had a bit of a slight upgrade, haven't I? Uh, before you, before I continue with this video, just remember to subscribe because uh, I didn't spend all day setting this up for nothing. <laughs> the thing that makes every oasis, whether it be the single palm tree in an unforgiving desert, or the extra large lift you get when you're halfway through your popcorn in a Fremantle cinema, is the hydrating presence of water, and Newman is no exception. I have almost as many conflicts of interest of talking about the Newman Aquatic Centre as Colin Barnett had with being a Premier in the first place, though not for the reasons people might think. I hated that place with such vehement and mendacious hatred that it made K-pop stands look like crime scene investigators. In terms of reasonableness, that is. You see, Newman, at a young age I was forced into swimming training, but I was not a good swimmer. My legs spent most of their time on the water and two years of swimming training did not change that. In fact, the only time I ever succeeded in swimming was when I was the year 10 champion board at the school swimming carnival. The runner-up being my best friend and the only participant in the swimming carnival besides myself. The worst part about being a poor swimmer was that I was at the lowest level of swimming training and thus spending every hour after school in swimming training with kids half my age who kept trumping me nonetheless. Of course, being instructed by someone who is in my same year group like a child. These two years of torture was something that was hard to endure, but I know I can look past this, because there are actually good memories about the Human Aquatic Center that I can retell, I just have to remember them. Hey you, do you want a fun childhood story that is also a great allegory for today's neo-capitalist society? Then get ready for The Wolf of Gregory Avenue. Imagine me, a young and enterprising individual, at our glorious blue school. Now I want some food, but as a youngin, I'm not the most loaded individual out there. So I go up to the canteen and ask, what can I get for 50 cents? Nothing. Nothing? How can kids live in a school where their only food outlet cannot provide for the poor among us even the most basic of resources, like cupcakes made from home brand batter, or even a fruit cup? I mean, sure, there was actual fruit within the range of affordability, but that would be a loss of dignity, a return to savagery for the less fortunate student. I wanted to change this, for the good of the school, and the good of my school short pockets. This relates to the pool, I swear. I have a genius plan. The Woolies cookies and chip packs are cheap. Even with a 50% profit margin, an entire cup of cookies would only need to be sold for $2. So I went to Woolworths with my head held high and my spare change in my school bag. It wasn't long before my enterprise sprouted. I walked around the school grounds during recess and lunch with cookie cups in my bag, selling them to any student and teacher that would buy them. I turned $5 into 20 with complete ease. The complacent behemoth that was the school canteen stood no chance against my fast-paced, ever-evolving cookie cup enterprise. School Swimming Carnival the wetter of the two carnivals. Under the shade sail, we half-heartedly sang the monotonous theme song of our faction. The same five songs that every school faction sings in a universal phenomenon mandated by the higher powers above us, as the few and often sporty swimmers who actually participate compete in their faction. I always participated out of principle. I did more than just swim. I expanded. With the extensive planning of ten minutes of passive thought, I purchased all possible resale goods, cookie cups, small chips, you name it. I might have even purchased soft drinks, but I can't quite remember. Some teachers complained about the unhealthy food options, like they did when my Lowly Looms Lunches LLC was still on the playground. I ignored that advice and took the better advice of turning $10 into $30. There is nothing like a swimming carnival to become an entrepreneur with always polyunsaturated potato chips. In the end, the teachers brought me into the principal's office and said if I continued, I would be reported for misleading packaging and Looms Lunches LLC was dissolved into dirt leaving the canteen to monopolise with their clearly home brand food. I still never completely forget what I had done, for it was incredible. I also have many other typical uh, human aquatic centre memories, like playing with the inflatable obstacle course that comes around every so often, or sausage sitting, and just generally cooling off. Because the human aquatic centre is an oasis after all. Beautiful, 
chlorine field oasis. Ciao.